Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. I'm here today to recreate something that I received from Zoe at Paper Eve Creations over on Instagram. Uh, I got this beautiful card from her on my birthday. And I've also recently had some gorgeous papers bought for me. It's the Rose Parfum set, or however you say it, Parfum, <laughs> by Stamperia. And it, it reminded me of this card. So I thought I'd give it a whirl. So just to show you that you can recreate something even if you don't have all the same items. I didn't have these items Zoe used. It was just basically the colour that reminded me. And I could have done it in any colour. I just, yeah, I just thought of this card when I saw these papers. So I've gone ahead and made my version of it. It's slightly different, different supplies. And I've done a few different things on it. Zoe's was a birthday card. Mine's going to be a journal card or... As I've not done anything on the inside yet, I could turn it into a little mini journal, an ephemera folio, anything I want really. I will decide at the point of putting it in a journal what its final purpose is going to be. So let's show you how I did it. These are the papers. I'll show you a few more of the papers as we choose one in a moment. So I've started off with, I know this is the exact same thing Zoe used because we live like five, ten miles from each other and we buy supplies in a lot at the same places. So her base is one of these cards. This is what we call a DL card in UK. I think, is it eight by eight? Is it just slightly over eight, I think it is, inches? Eight and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter. So it's an ideal base if you're wanting to do anything and just put a full eight by eight piece of scrapbooking paper on it. So I'll grab one of those. Now I used a very cheaty method of <laughs> cutting my corners. I'm just folding it. Just keep it lined up while I fold it nicely in half. Grab my burn folder. As you can see, I've got bits all over the desk from making mine. I've gid up on tidying up before I start a video. It's not real, is it? Saves a lot of time. So we'll crease that. Now, I had Zoe's card. So all I did is I got Zoe's card and I popped it on the front of my card and I made lines and I cut my corners off. But because you, might, you perhaps haven't got a card, I've just grabbed my handy dandy little plastic card and I made a corner that's the exact same size as the angles on Zoe's card because I liked the shape I like those angles so I'm going to place that on one corner chomp it off then turn it over so I've got the exact same angle on that corner I know I've showed this before but someone did recently ask about it and how to make one of these cards I just basically chomped random corners off. This is the only one that is matched up to anything and that is Zoe's card. So there we go. So now I've got the base. Right. Because this card is eight inches high and that's, you're gonna need a pretty big junk journal to fit that in. I did cut some off the bottom. I don't think I measured it. I just randomly cut some. So I'll tell you now how much I did cut off and what size I made my card. So I made my card seven and a half inches near as, damn it. So I'm gonna cut half an inch off this card. Now I want to cut three quarters off, don't I? Because this card's eight and... Get your big chopper out, woman. What are you messing out? What are you messing out with that little thing when you've got a big card to do? Yeah, I'm gonna have to get a big chopper out and put it. Oh, there it is. I couldn't find that first. So I'll, I'll make my card seven and a half inches long. Do, do, do. Yeah, seven and a half. That's about only measuring I've done. I'm really measuring a verse lately. Well, I, I don't see it need to do a lot of measuring unless you, you need something in exact size. And we don't really, it is the size it ends up being, isn't it? So that's my card. And now, well, let's choose some paper. So I'll bring the rose perfume set back. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's roses and it's pink and I love it. We've got all these cutter parts on that side. I've gone ahead and done some cutter parts. So that you get cutter parts on the back sheet as well. That, oh, I did have one of these cards part made. 
I was making it a little bit too late and it were, it were late and I was tired and I cut bottom corners off but that didn't have to be an issue look I stuck them back on with labels you know when I cut my paper instead of cutting top corners off I had my paper upside down so I stuck them back on and it's okay I will go ahead and finish making that one but today I want to make this one with you I think I want to use that same paper oh, that's the one I made my first one from it's so gorgeous but you don't have to use this paper use anything you want use any paper any digitals I went a bit giddy ripping it out at pack there I think I want to use that one yeah look it's absolutely it's just it's just got me written all over it this paper pack spinny spinny look at that the perfume bottles the roses yum diddly scrum yeah there are quite a few in fact stamperi themselves do a flip through of every collection they do so i'll try and link that so you can see the full collection if you're interested but for today you don't need this paper you just need some paper right so this is how i this is me and measuring lately <clears throat> let's do it like that silly woman i want my paper to be slightly smaller than me uh, card so I've just brought it can you see it bottom of my screen I've just brought it down a little bit I'm just gonna oh, <laughs> draw on card let's rub that out shall we silly woman and I want it to be slightly narrower than my card as well so that's gonna be about that and that's how I decide where to cut that's about as uh, technical as it gets because if I do measure it, I find that I totally forget the measurements. Between measuring it and cutting it, I've forgot what the measurements were. Unless I write it down, and that's just one step I just really don't need to be doing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, the days when everything had to be lined up within an eighth of an inch of its life. Yeah, the time I wasted. So let's pop that on. That's looking pretty good. I like that. So now I want to cut those. I forgot how I did it. <laughs> yeah, I cut them off and then I cut a little bit more off. This is going to sound really mad, look. If you're mass making these, measure one and then cut the rest of them to match. So there we go. So I need to cut a little bit more off. And this is as technical as I got. Are we watching? Cut. Cut. Now, if you've watched me for a long time, you'll know how brave that was, me doing some freehand cutting with my scissors. But look, I'm happy with it. Jobs are good and So, the ink I've used, I've used a little bit of saltwater taffy. Again, you don't have to. Zoe didn't. And I've also used my Distress Oxide in walnut stain they're both distress oxides unless you're doing any fancy ink techniques oxide ordinary distress ink just I pick whatever color i fancy right so i've gone this is just a piece of wet and dry foam they call it i've been told that tim Holtz is not selling it anymore not happy timmy not happy love that stuff just comes as a big sheet and you cut off what you want but you can buy those makeup sponges or anything you want so I've just gone around edges just because I think this colour goes well with this um, paper well any any pink ink would do if you want to put a bit more pink on it all depends what paper you're using doesn't it you might be using blue right. another inspiration for this project uh, I've been a bit couldn't decide what to do and I was watching a lovely lady called Jill who has got a channel called Copycat Crafts by Jill. Now I, I, I love Jill's channel name and I love what she does. She's done a few of my projects and I do apologise for not commenting Jill. I'm going to go back and comment. I watch in bed at night when I'm not I'm not taking my hands out from under covers. It's too cold to press key buttons. I can't see to be honest when I'm in bed at night to do comments so yeah copycat crafts by Jill and I thought mm, I'll do a copycat version of Zoe's card and link her and 
yeah I'll tell you who she is that's something i like about jill's channel she'll do someone else's project and always give them credit that's so that i like it right if you look at this one i made i sewed around the edge so if you've got a sewing machine don't sew if you haven't got a sewing machine so on this one i'm not going to sew if you had the time or the inclination you could go around with a black fine liner and put your stitching lines in that's something i'm like if i'm gonna do that i'll sew because i've got the sewing machine if not i'll just leave it so i'm gonna leave that like that now there is a sheet in this paper collection with that's one large journal cards look at those aren't they gorgeous just to save a little bit of time i'm having a craft lunch on here i've got too many things piled up at a silly angle just to save a smidgen of time i've already gone ahead and cut out the one i want to use there we go put it right way up woman and it's that rose they're absolutely lovely and they've got spaces on the other side with less writing so with less yeah space for writing that's all you need to say woman space for writing there you go you know what i mean there is also a sheet of smaller ones that i've already gone and cut them all up so i've got a few of them here so on mine as you can see i've used one of the large journal cards on the front and then i've used a small journal card to pop in and i've popped that little ticket on the side on the card zoe made the ticket was fixed behind that yeah i like the idea of that tag on front with the tag top i were rummaging and i found a slightly different size tag top so that's what i used i wanted flowers mine are completely different use what i used and i obviously haven't put any little girls on <laughs> i think that was a nod towards my twins from zoe zoe's also got twins yeah oh twins we love them really anyway stop waffling and crack on what you're doing so that's the card i want to put on here this one's going to be very pink isn't it i could use the other side if i wanted but i don't want i want to use that side and the edges i've roughed them up with a little tool if i can't find my tool i'm going to be doing it with scissors i've not put my tool away have i here we go that's the tool and the tool is basically it's like a blade this is just to protect your fingers and you can rough rough up the edges of your card i did it because zoe did it <laughs> no other reason than that and it's something i never think to do these days back when i had fewer tools i used to use this a lot more now if you don't have that tool don't go getting a razor blade out but you can get some scissors i'm gonna be really naughty and use my tumult scissors and look you get the same effect by rubbing the blade of the scissors on the edge it's just a bit safer especially for me to use something like that so i'm going to go ahead and finish it with a proper tool there are only about five of them tools actually again everything i use you'll find on my amazon storefront i, I said before i buy most of my stuff from amazon now anyway because i don't drive and sometimes even if it's a bit more expensive on amazon it's cheaper than paint bus fare to get somewhere isn't it Eey, that's how i look at it i think could i save the cost of the bus fare going out buying this stuff and if the answer's no i'll just order it Eey. if i'm ordering a lot of stuff i'll perhaps go to an online craft shop i like budley crafts art from the heart these papers came from oh i've totally forgot the name of the shop they came from you silly woman charmed cards and crafts that's it i'll try and put all these links in the description right so that's my roughed up edge on this one i'm not going to bother with any pink because we've got enough pink i'm just gonna ink my edges with my walnut stain <laughs> i've got bits everywhere now i'm not the tidiest crafter in the world i think I think we know this don't we yeah it's a pretty simple project this it's not earth shattering it's not rocket science but sometimes we just need that don't we right i'll do a bit of walnut stain around my card i'll just do it front 
yeah this is a good one for any uh, ex card makers or current card makers that are doing journaling as well so i've got loads of these card blanks i have absolutely lots i used to like mass make cards for yeah, I used to do invitations, wedding invitations, party, christening, stuff like that. I used to make cards and sell them at craft fairs. And I'm one of these people. I'll buy lots of something when it's cheap. Quite often I buy more than I'm ever going to need in a lifetime. But hey-ho. Right, grab some glue. I'm going to use my glue stick in the middle and my art glitter glue. That is, I've got it decanted into a little bottle. <clears throat> if you're new to oh that's oh oh you can see what oh what's she doing now i've decided i like that side better so i've got to ink that again aren't i oh my word right you've seen me do this once i'm going to pause while i do this inking two ticks and we're back and there in a nutshell is my only one yeah criticism of stamperia papers they're too blinking gorgeous on both sides so i can never decide oh that's so yummy that's probably the side i intended to use anyway and i just because we're talking i decided that one first but no we're using that one i could use either gorgeous gorgeous anyway glue it on woman and stop fawning over it oh right so got that ready but i'm going to put my art glitter glue on first and then just Wang, wang, I'm gonna wang some uh, what's it glue on. You could use anything in the middle. I'm just, I'm very frugal with art glitter because it's the most expensive glue that I use. Although the way I use it, it lasts forever. But gotta be like that these days, haven't we? Gotta be like that. Oops. No, I'm very fortunate to have. Uh, lovely people sending me yummy items and i can't thank you enough because i wouldn't be able to go out and buy so much crafting stuff even with doing youtube just don't have the budget for it so i am really thankful Whee. Here we go. we'll get to get a wee in didn't we <laughs> some people might think i'm conscious i don't honestly sometime when i'm doing anything it seems to be anything repetitive, doesn't it? I just go, wee. <laughs> I think that comes from, uh, yeah. That's me, dinner lady days that started that. And I've gone, I've, uh, gone on before about me and a dinner lady. My favourite place to work in was what we call foundation unit in UK. That were for the uh, three and four year olds who stayed for lunch. Because the uh, guidelines in UK... Uh, yeah, when they, when they started following him at school I worked at, you could only have eight children for one adult. So my lunch times were feeding and playing with eight little three and four year olds. It was just best job in the world. Best job in the world, I loved it. Because you can just be so silly when you play with kids at that age. And they love it. You can do all, all to please them. So, right. So that's good. Look at that. Look at the difference with just a bit of ink and roughing that edge up. You don't have to do a lot when you've got gorgeous papers. Don't cover them up. You don't need to. Right, I'm going to grab a... What's it, my jiggy my bob thing? One of them. Yeah, one of them. To pop on top. If you don't have those... Oh, that's a different shape. Now, these... People have asked me this before. There are the ones from Elizabeth Craft Designs. Yeah, that come in a planner essentials die set the die set is like 25 pounds here and i bought mine just for that although i then did get a liking for him i bought mine just for that that one is an aliexpress one yeah it's not a copy of anyone's it is just one there are some places on aliexpress that don't just do copies of other people's dies and that's what this one is so fold it Whee. I can't remember the name of the actual shop I got it from. But you'll then find, even when someone on AliExpress comes up with something original, there's another 20 shops copy it. So it's, ugh. Whee. I don't know why I think both sides when we're only going to see one. That's just pure habit. And then I'm going to glue that on. 
if you want to do any sewing you could sew around that you could sew around that just do it before you stick everything on i think that's like uh yeah I'm telling you oh, stating obvious that isn't it but i do quite often state obvious just to remind myself to do it like place your glue glue side down and all that don't glue them together silly woman I'm going to put that quite high up so you can still see some of that word there we go a bit higher up than I did on my last one over a bit to me to you to you to me <laughs> you've no idea what that is that is a pair of comedians that actually comedians they used to be on children's TV in the UK called Chuckle Brothers. They're actually from the same town as me, Rotherham. And it was just one of their jokes to me, to you, when they were moving or <laughs> something. And I have actually seen that joke in other programmes since. Yeah, I'm just waffling now. So I'll probably have that. I might have it lower down here. You know, because I've put that. Let me show you this one. Because I've put my little clipboard die higher up i now need to put my card lower down so that i've still got room to put this yummy little button thing on so i'm spitting on it stop stop it stop spitting so yeah i'm going to glue that on you could just glue it down that side and that so you could tuck something in i prefer to glue it at top as well so i'm going to glue top left and bottom so i'll hold it on i always do this because I'm so good at print glue in the wrong place, I hold it on the side I don't want glue on. I'm, I'm, I've very much got that kind of mentality. I'll have my little routines in place that prevent things going wrong. Because I am so... <laughs> because I can be so... Ooh. And that's it. Ooh, yeah, I'm ooh. Is that a thing? I don't know. Uh, mm, that'll do. I'm a happy bunny with that. Looking good. Straightish. I like that. Oh, it's so much more pink than the other one. I might have to uh, get a different colour ribbon for the top. So while that glues on, I'm going to find a button and find some seam binder. I got this one out. Same colour. Do you know I am? I'm going to go with it. I like it. I think if I did pink, it'd be too much pink. That green goes lovely with leaves on rose. So I'm going to do that. I'll also, I just want to put, I don't need to put any flowers on like I did here, but I think it just adds a little bit of dimension, doesn't it? So I'm going to grab, I've got these two packs of ephemera. Oh, I like that. That come with the Stamperia collection. I like these. They seem to have got like a little bit of a sheen to them. But not, it's not overly shiny. It's just, I don't even know if camera will pick it up. Oh, look at that. That's cute. Oh, we could put a little ensemble there. Oh, a little birdie. A little birdie told me so. <laughs> these are sweet. We could put another, is that too much pink? Do we need more pink? I don't know. Oh, I like that one. That would cover up the part of the envelope that I like. Oh, that's so sweet. We've got a birdie going the other way now. Oh, he looks a little bit scared, doesn't he? He's like hunched over, like, oh, please don't eat me, big eagle. <laughs> Got. I'm not going to have another rose going the other way, am I? It's not going to happen. I think I'm perhaps <laughs> just going to stick another flower on it. I think this might need something that side. I don't know what I'm doing. That's that one. And then we've got this one. Maybe because that hasn't got much wordage on, maybe I want one of these with some wordage. Hmm, actually, that. <laughs> That matches the shape of that, doesn't it? And it says memories. Oh, yeah, we've got to have it below the rose, though. Oh, that's it, done. Done and dusted. Jobs are good done. We don't need to do anything. I could put a little birdie on it. Oh, God, there's still a bird there. As if by magic. 
Memories. No. I think I nearly swore then. <laughs> we don't need the bird. I like that. That's what's going to happen. So pop all these back in. These are yummy as well. Yumbly, yumbly. Here Ooh. is an answer from an Alexa Answers contributor that I translated. Really? The definition, which falls down, can be adapted to the words drooping, sloping, tilted, oblique, <laughs> sloping. Did that answer your question? No. <laughs> Thanks for your feedback. I didn't have a question, did I? Did anyone hear me ask uh, Gertrude a question? I did not ask Gertrude a question. So we've got sloping, tilting. Yeah, there you go. Love it. Oh, I do like that. Mm -hmm. No, needs a bit bottom. Don't matter if it's hanging off bottom a bit. I like that. I really do. Yeah. Right. Sound like I'm trying to convince myself, don't I? That's because I had it in my head to put flowers on and I've gone and put that on, but it has got flowers on. I like it. It just came together. Right. I have no idea how Zoe did this at the top she's got two bows and one tail she's glued her tails down a little bit which is a good idea to make sure you can see everything mine are just flopping free a bit like me i like to flop free tilting sloping <laughs> at an oblique angle as gertrude said so move that out of your way woman move that out of your way so how i did it is this i got my trim there's probably a way to do this and I am not aware of it and I made one bow like so that needs to be longer so leave yourself a bit more eyelash trim before you do your bow like so I'm a poet and I don't know it that's cheesy 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 so that's going to go like so so I'm going to cut that off <laughs> I'm being very good with my new scissors and keeping the cover on them. But then I try and use them where I have to keep cover off and I'm like, well, I can't open these scissors. Cut that there. I'll cut that one down. Yeah. We've got a spare bit there. It'll go in something. And then I got another piece of this. This is because I don't know how to do bows with double bows. And I just did that. So if you can see, I <laughs> just joined it and there, there you go, there you go. And while I'm doing my sewing of the <laughs> through the button, I just put a stitch in it to keep it where I wanted. No idea if that's how you did it, Zoe. You probably had a much easier way of doing it. And if you're watching this, you're probably laughing your bum off at me thinking, oh my word, can't believe she's done it like that. I've no idea. I don't know. Right. This is turning into a waffle fest again, but hey, don't most of my videos. Right, I need to find a matching button. I've just grabbed a handful of probably ones I'm not going to like. Although I do like that one. I'm, I'm thinking a yellow one would look nice, but that's the not, right, not the right kind of yellow. So do I need to go in my button box and grab another yellow? Maybe I do. Now, anyone who has got OCD and doesn't like to see colours mixed up, do not look. Look away for the next two minutes. This is my button box for my coloured buttons. Look at that. They're all mixed up. Oh, I like that colour. That's a possibility. Perhaps one slightly bigger, though. I'm sorry if this is really loud. Me scooping in my button box. Whee! Do you know, I don't think I've got a lot of pale yellow buttons in the size I want. That's far too big. That's probably exactly the same as first one I got out. And probably so is that. Let's just grab, oh, that's a creamy coloured one. Gee, sorry about the noise. She says, still making it. Oh, let's make some more noise. That's like when you start a, or you end a, <laughs> end a comment by saying, no offence like your hair's terrible no offense <laughs> i bet you all know somebody like that don't you yeah no offense but i'm just gonna offend you i think i've got enough to pick from there now so i'm gonna put all them back in sorry about the noise i know it's loud this on camera i used to take those buttons into school 
when I was doing crafts with kids. And the one teacher in particular who really envied my button box. <laughs> right. I like that, I like that. I like that with a little bit of... Um... Mm, I don't know that one. What, what? Why are you so vocal today? You just really... It's because I haven't made a video all week, isn't it? You really need to go in and act. Mm. No offence, Alexa, but... <laughs> Sorry, said the word Gertrude. That's why I call mine Gertrude, so I'm not setting yours off. Yeah, I like that because it goes nicely with that rose. Right, oh, this is just faff city now, isn't it? Right, I'm going to grab some cotton. I'm going to grab a needle. Can we still see? I'm just going to check my lighting because it's cracking on in the afternoon here now. Oh, that were a bit bright. That's a bit better. Oh, got your needle. Get your cotton. Eee. <laughs> Can't even get cotton off. Yeah, it, this is probably not, this is probably not the best way to do this that I'm showing you. But hey-ho. I think, I don't know, as Zoe got one of them bow maker thingamajigs. You can get this plastic thing that looks like a comb and you can make bows on it. And I forget how to use it. So I don't use it. To use it, I need to watch a video tutorial first. So, hence, I don't use it. But I'm thinking maybe that's how Zoe did her bow. Right, so that's my main bow. This, <laughs> this is my bit that's going to make my extra tails. So, I'm going to sew that on. I know this is probably not the way to do it. So, I'm sewing one end on. Probably be easy to see if I weren't using crinkle seam binding. But I am using crinkle seam binding. We. This is how I start off. There we go. So that's one end on. So I'm going to make my bow the size I want. Me take my loop. It's a loop. That's where it is. I'll make that loop the size I want. I like that. And then I'm going to come through and catch that. Yay! Don't catch what you don't want to catch. And then I'm going to come through my button. I think I'll have my button that way. So up through one of the holes. So I sew this whole thing together and then I glue it on my card. That's just the way I've done it. You do. If you know a better way, you do it. Let me know that better way in comments. If you've got one. Sometimes I learned how to do something yesterday from my friend uh, Cheryl and I've been stressing on how to do a live video when I've only got a mobile phone and how to get that linked up to my laptop and blah and you don't have to get linked up to your laptop. I film like I do now and I watch the live video on my laptop as I'm going along and I can see people's comments so yeah, coming up soon, I'm I'm finally going to do that live video. I've been promising for about a year. Come on, you can go. I can't fight all. I've lost it. I want to come up through that hole and I've lost it. It's not where I come up last time. There we go. <laughs> this is sewing for dummies. Well, it's not. It's sewing by dummies. I'm liking that. It's looking good. A few more stitches just to make sure it's not going to get pulled off by the angry baboons that try and ruin your pieces. Whee. I think that's my last stitch and I'll finish it off and then I'm just going to glue the whole thing on. I'm going to glue it on last because I like to use art glitter glue. It does take a bit longer to dry than if you're using Fabri-Tac or something like that. But I don't personally like Fabri-Tac. It smells too much for my... My chest doesn't like Fabri-Tac. My lungs complain about it. So I like to use art glitter. When you're using quite a lot of art glitter, it does take longer to dry, but it does dry really well. So I'm going to cut that off, leaving a bit of a tail. And there I have my bow. 
<laughs> we all it's that one is better than that one actually. I like it. We all its tails that I'm gonna glue at the top. I'm liking that. So before I'd glue that on, oh I could glue that on and no, because I need to hold it and I can't finish the video while I'm sat holding a button, can I? Let's glue this on. Whee. I think they're jumping about from one thing to another during this video as explain where my head's been this week. Oh, don't I think I think my brain got boiled earlier on in the week. Don't even. Eating engineer has mucked up the controls on my heating. So now basically all I can have is the heating and the hot water switched on at the same time. The thermostat seems to be bypassed so it doesn't switch off at a certain temperature. It just keeps going and keeps going until you've turned your house into a tropical paradise. And yeah, ooh, yeah, I was a little bit hot and flustered before I realised what on earth they'd done. So I was there at 11 o'clock at night when my window's wide open and fans on because it was just so hot. Bearing in mind temperature in the UK were like down near to zero. That's how hot my house had got. So yeah, I'm hoping when it, the engineer comes back to fix it, it's a different engineer because this one, mm, yeah, you better not ask for a cup of tea. Mm, that's all I can say. Cup of tea, I'm just going to have a swig of mine. Right, so that's that on. I will now do my little card for, I want to use one of these perfume bottles. I just think a perfume bottle in there is going to be so sweet. Yeah, I've roughed the edge up just the same on my little insert card. Yeah, it's very, very flu-fru-fru. What's the word Fiona uses, Miss Paint a lot? Fru-fru to describe floofy bits. Yeah, this project has got a lot of frou-frou. I've done a lot of Tim Holtz recently, which is so different, isn't it, to this? But what do they say? A change is as good as a rest. And I shall, yeah. Right, that's that. Get some ink on. I mean, you can go to town with that and take big chunks out of things. I just want to rough my edge up a little bit. I'm not into... Taking big chunks out. Right, I'm going to grab a ticket. I just, it goes on to the back a little bit. I'm quite happy with that. Don't bother me. Don't bother me. Because it's worth it for the look you get on the front. I do have a little bit of the other ticket left, but I've lost it. So I'm going to grab one. I'm using my Tim Holtz tickets. Use any ticket you want. I like these because they're nice and chompy. I made a cardboard so I'm just going to use the edge of that ticket like so now this one hasn't got a shape like the other one had and I want it to have a shape so I'm going to come in with my circle punch and just punch a little bit out of there circle punch where are you I'll use this one this satisfied my spending addiction. £1.30 odd off for Amazon. <laughs> it's a single hole punch. How cute is that? I think I raved about this on another video. Ooh, that's the next one you want to do. Cute, cute, cute. And then I'm just going to take a little noggin out at the middle as well. There you go. I'm much happier now with that ticket shape. So if you don't have it, make it. I know I get into that mindset all the time. I see something, I'm like, I've got to do it. I've got to use exactly the same things. But you don't. You can get the look without using the same stuff. Use similar stuff or make your own stuff. Right, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on there. And I'm going to stick it to there. I've used the line on the ticket to help me get it straight. Yep, then I'm going to pop a hole in it. Use whatever old punch is preferred. I'm going to use a small hole this time. I used a big one on that. And I just fancy using a small one this time. Grab my eyelet. There you go. that through oh <laughs> I dropped it come back you monkey 
Oh, that was that took some doing, didn't it? I'm just going to swap my cropper down to do small eyelets and hope I've got the right ones. I've no hope of telling you what they're on. There's not enough. It's too late in the day for me to read them little words. Did I get it right? Yeah, that looks good. Mm, a little bit more squeezing. Squeeze a bit harder, woman. There we go. So that's going to pop in there. Oh, I'm likey-liking. And I've already got myself a little key out to pop on. I don't... I have a lot of these ready-made, just little charms, but I've no idea where I've put them. So I'm going to have to quickly make a little charm. I'm just going to pause while I assemble my beads and I'll be back. And I'm back. I didn't mean assemble my beads, I meant gather my beads, yeah? Because you didn't want to see me open 27 different bead boxes just to grab six beads, did you? So I've just grabbed a little one. That colour, I'm copying the one I made before. Although I couldn't find any more pink beads. I don't know where I've put my pink bead box. So this one will just be greens and no pinks. Greens and creams. I have a load of these ready-made, but I had this mad idea to rearrange things. And I have no idea where I've put them. All my little ready-made dangles. Yeah, again, if you watch me for a while, I used to keep them in here. Mm -hmm. Now I keep my old paper clips in there for Etsy orders. And I haven't a clue what I've done with all my dangles that were in there. And I've had a really good idea about where to put them at the time. But that idea, I just have no idea. <laughs> no idea about the idea. I think I want another green on there. Is that green? Oh, that's green. That's a small green. Oh, I'm terrible with beads. Oh, yeah, that's better. And then I'll put... <laughs> yes, I do have the little mats that you can put beads on. Yes, I have all the bells and whistles for beading, as I made jewellery years ago. But do I get them out and use them? No. Why? Because that would be too easy, wouldn't it? Why make life easy for yourself when you can make it difficult? Right, and now this is where all you professional jewellery makers are going to be like, oh, what's she doing? Right, this is how I do these. Bend it over. Sometimes I don't bend it over enough. <laughs> Sometimes I bend it over too much. Then I'm going to snip. And this is one of them things you can't measure it. It's about quarter to an half inch I'm going to snip off. And then we're going to grab me pliers. And roll it to make a loop. Oh, that's it. I start like that. That's it. That goes over. I've decided I've got too much metal, so I'm going to snip a bit more off. I've got glasses on, so don't worry. I'm not going to take my eye out live on camera. I'm just going to curl that round some more. And it's going to be the worst curl you have ever seen, but it doesn't matter. No one's judging this piece for the expertness of the curl on the top. That looks good enough to me. And I'm going to grab a little copper ring. That might be a bit big. I might go one size down. Yeah. Don't ask me what that size is. I have to clue these were just a pack of assorted sizes. What those sizes are is anyone's guess. Because these are quite fine, I can open them with my fingers. And I'm going to pop that through there. First I'm going to pop on my little bead charm. And then I'm going to pop on my little key. And then I'm going to close that up. I always check it's not rough. That's how I know it's closed properly. There we go. Then that is going to pop in there. So we've got that same look that Zoe got on hers with the ticket, but we've just added the ticket to a little journal card. So I'm pretty happy with that one. Everything's gone to plan. Hunky dory. Jobs are good. In. Right, all we'll have to do now is glue on our button. So I'll just show you how I do it and then I'll turn camera off and sit here holding it for five minutes. 
because I could clip it with a clip, but I want it to be completely flat. If I clip it with a clip, it could be at an angle, and I don't want that. So I will, I'm willing to sacrifice five minutes of my time <laughs> for this project. So I'm going to put a goodly amount of art glitter glue on. Yeah, that's going to soak into everything, and it's going to be thick enough. Get in the middle. Just manipulate these if you need to. I'm pretty happy with that. So there we have it. And where did Zoe's go? Have I lost Zoe's in the... Uh... <laughs> I've lost... Zoe, I've lost your card, love. I don't know how to put it. Oh, my word. Could this woman be any more? Here it is. So that's the original by Zoe. Yeah, and they're the ones I've made. I absolutely love them. I wouldn't have come up with that idea on my own. It's definitely based on this. So I'll link Zoe's Instagram account. Don't forget to hold that. I will also link Copycat Crafts by Jill because she does some really good takes on other people's projects. And she's very upfront, very open about that. That's what she's doing. And it's amazing to see the little tweaks that she makes and how she uses different items and comes up with something just as gorgeous. So there we go. I'm off skis now and I will see you when I see you. Thank you for watching. Bye.